The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 644 The Split Sister. Shine Spark floated through the dining hall of the Immortal Dream, eyes scanning for ponies. Amber was laying in the middle of the floor on her belly, cheeks propped on her hooves and tail swishing as she watched the misty clouds below. Amber, Shrensper greeted, earning perked ears. Do you know where Valet is? She borrowed something, and I'm looking for it. Huh? Oh, hi, Shrensper. Amber brightened on seeing her. She's in one of the empty cabins, I think. Went in a while ago and asked not to be disturbed. Mm, she sniffed. You smell like soup. What are you looking for? Eh, yeah, Shrensper chuckled, bobbing in her own aura. Slipstream brought me some. We had a nice talk. I'm looking for Niala's moon glass to take some measurements and run some preliminary tests. I think I've cobbled together enough of a body for her to at least hear and talk again. Amber shrugged, busy being fascinated by patterns in the clouds. Yep, Slipstream's nice. I chat with her about Riverfall sometimes. It takes a while to get her talking, but that girl has a lot to say. Just got to talking about life in the Stone District, Shinesbuck agreed. Anyway, thank you. I have a bad pony to bother. She left Amber behind, drifting up the staircase and down the cabin hall, listening to every door she passed and checking beneath for telltale signs of light. Eventually, near the back on starboard, one door had a note taped to the front reading KNOCK FIRST in messy capital letters. Valet? Shinespark knocked as requested, raising her weakened voice as loud as it would go. It's Shinespark. Can I come in? Bah? Valet's voice sounded odd on the other side, with a slightly different quality it didn't usually have. Mm, she hesitated. Uh, yeah, sure, I guess. Close the door behind you and don't yell or anything. Furring her brow, Shinespark slid the door open, hovered inside, and closed it again without focusing her eyes, saving whatever Valet was hiding for once they were in private. When she did look up, the mare laying on the bed wasn't Valet. Oh, she was partly valet. One eye remained emerald, and her mane was still green at the base, but it was shorter with the tips merging to crimson pink. Her other eye was sky blue, patches of lighter gray spread throughout her coat, and the cutie mark Shinesper could see held a vibrating line feeding into a pony's ear. Hey, Sparky! Halfily waved a golden pendant around her neck. What's up? Shinesbuck blinked, taking note of Niala's empty body standing in the corner, doing nothing, as always. Valet? Are you okay? You must be Shinespark, Valet said, her voice taking on more of that unusual tone. It's a pleasure. I've heard about you. I almost never get to meet new ponies. Shinespark worked her jaw. That pendant actually works, Valet finished for her. Yeah, heh. <laughs> Guess I kept this an even better secret than I thought. Bananas, I feel like I told you, ah, whatever. Sparky, this is Nyala. At least, the part of her I knew in Ironridge. She's, uh, not got a whole lot of memories showing my body, but she's still her. Wow. Shinespark glanced again to the empty bat pony body in the corner. It's nice to meet you too, I guess? Sorry, this isn't what I was expecting. Oh, it doesn't happen a lot, Valet said, though Shinesbark got the feeling Niala was speaking again. You're actually the third person I've ever met, counting Valet. The second was Herman. I saw you before when you were passed out on the skyport, but we never talked. Do I shake your hoof? Shinesbark tilted her head. Sorry, just the Niala I knew... Valet giggled, relaxing. The Niala you knew had a suit of armor for her body. I'm a shared conscience with Valet's body, and both of us have separate existences from my original body over there. She pointed a hoof at the carapace-covered empty pony. If you're confused, try being me. You're pretty upbeat about it, at least, Shinespark said. I don't know if you've heard, but I once had my soul split between two bodies at once, so I have at least an idea how you feel. Still, this is surreal. Yeah, we're trying to look on the bright side, Valet admitted back to herself again. It's, uh, it's kind of tough. I first got her out and put her back in the pendant, hoping I could stick it on that body and it would just work. Yeah, she shrugged at the empty shell. No dice, nothing happened. So then I figured maybe taking me for a spin and having a chat in our heads like old times would be better than stasis and oblivion while we waited for you to work and... Here we are. She coughed, continuing. I don't think I feel anything in the moonglass, though. 
I don't have any senses to be aware of the passing of time, or if I do, I don't have any memory to remember it. Or I do, and I'm not aware of it here. Ah, Valet trailed off, her ears folding. It's kind of important to stay upbeat. In this life, even if I only have a few days worth of memories, I know Valet. I've listened to her in Anridge when she was feeling alone, and I was with her in the Sky District while she was fighting for new friends. I'm talking to her now and can see how she's changed and I'm proud of her. It's like my memories are time-lapse. I wonder if this is how immortals see time. Heavily sighed. And when the you and your mechanical body remembers everyone else and has months of memories? But I brought you back at just the wrong time and had something else to do or messed up or something and things are awkward between us. We're awkward. I basically didn't get to know that version of you. Uh, she looked up at Shinespark, meeting her eyes. And now you're working on fixing brain, right? So things can go back to being that way? It's just... Bananas, this is too complicated to even do anything but roll with it. Uh, Shitsbuck winced, hovering over to the bed and taking a seat. You have a complicated life. <laughs> Which one of us? Valley chuckled. And it wasn't clear who was talking. I have no idea. Shitsbuck shook her head. It makes me wonder if I should think of myself in brain as more of a person than an extension of myself... Or if there's any way different things could have gone with my own sister or... Valet reached up and patted Sean Spark's back. Hey, trust me, Sparky. If you're not thinking about it, like, here I am rolling out the mist veil and dragging all you guys along to get some second opinions and better answers on this thing called Luna's Artifice that's apparently right now forming one half of my butt. I've got, like, destiny and a reason for the existence of bad ponies to deal with. But trying to figure this stuff out? Uh, she shook her head. I can't even try. Me and Yala were just rolling with whatever happens. Shinesburg closed her eyes and Valet spoke again. You have a complicated relationship with my sister too, it sounds? Yes. Uh, Shinesburg took a breath. I have a lot of sisters. This one's called Granada. I looked out for her a lot when we were younger, but never told her about our relationship because I had a district to rule and didn't want to look like I was showing favoritism to relatives. My family also has a messy history, and I wanted to keep her safe from that. And she took it all the wrong way and developed a crush on me. Then we both thought the other had died in the battle at the Skyport, found each other months later, and I tried to avoid dealing with the different ways we saw each other, messed things up more through it, and she left. I haven't seen her for a month. And Valet gave her a wry smile. Yeah, good thing everyone makes mistakes. You wanna lay in our backs and stare at the ceiling for a while? Sounds like a good use of time, Shinesbuck agreed, rolling over next to her and letting the tension drain from her limbs. We've still got however many days until we reach the Grand Temple. Not quite however many days later, Shinespark sat in her makeshift shop, voice and limbs much stronger than they had been before. An unarmored apparatus sat on the table before her, nothing but a square board covered in mana circuits, clustered wires, a few pre-built devices, and a central socket where a piece of moonglass would go. Brain's old mechanical wings were attached to the sides, rigged so that Niala could have at least some sort of physical output without modifying them too heavily to put back once the armor was repaired. Gerardo and Slipstream stood to one side, with Maple and Valet on the other, Amber waiting in the background with Starlight and Jam Jars. Yo, Valet said, extending a wing with Niala's clump of moonglass. All right, Shinesbuck breathed, holding in her nerves as she took the chunk in her aura. I'm using Brain's original reception socket for this. It took a while to free it from the armor, but if Niala can retain her memories using that pendant and they're different from her memories as Brain, it's my best guess as to the cause. Testing in three, two, on the final count. She nestled the moon glass firmly into the socket. It almost seemed to melt in place, either the glass filling the space or the metal reflowing around it, and her aura flicked the tiny switch. Lights came alive on the board's back, pathways tracing to a small manicure embedded in the machine's tail, and the wings clicked slightly with motion, the speaker coming alive with Niala's voice. Where am I? she asked, dazed, as everyone held their breath. What happened to my body? I can't feel so much of it. Did my legs get cut off when he used that sword on me? Shinespark? Did we lose? Shinespark reached down and hugged the circuit-covered board. 
And you still remember. Looks like we brought you back to life after all. Gerardo beamed with gratitude. Miss Scheinsbach here has been working night and, well, night to rebuild you once she was sufficiently recovered from my sword. It's very inspirational. Hey, yeah, Billy grinned awkwardly at the camera. Welcome back. It's been like a little over a week. Less than two. Round two is over and I'm still in the tournament thanks to you, so... Amber did a tiny dance on her hooftips. Really? Niala asked, really trying to keep in the camera's immobile field of view. My body stopped working, and then everything blacked out. Yes, really, Valet sat down, nodding at the board. And you didn't have to do that, you know. Even though we, like, should have been close, I wasn't really that great about not getting distracted and putting you first. So, you didn't really owe me that, but do you think I could try to do better this time and get another chance? We're kind of going somewhere important for me to do something, but I need to be able to balance real life with my friends and your comp completely immobile, so, uh, yeah. Niala hesitated. I don't think I'm completely immobile, she hummed, thinking. I can... let me try. Her golden wings unfurled and, like giant flippers, started dragging her across the workbench, waddling forward one jerky flop at a time. Amber couldn't help herself and laughed. I'm sorry, and this is terrible, but... That has to be the cutest way of getting around I've ever seen. Huh, Scheinsberg blinked. I guess it's a good thing I put those on then. But, uh, you and me, Valet gave a hopeful grin. I really feel awkward and like I should have paid you more attention, but could we... Do you even need to ask? Niala replied, practicing turning in a circle and inclining herself up and down. It gets lonely sitting with no one to talk to, especially when I don't sleep. Of course you can, she was interrupted by a soft crackle from the intercom. Ahahahaham, <laughs> a dainty voice cleared his throat. Everyone, this is acting Captain Felicity speaking, seeing as no one else apparently felt like marrying or stallioning the bridge. But someone more in charge than I am really ought to get up here, because we've just been boarded by Cerosians. End of chapter 644